love to sing the wondrous love of Jesus. I love to sing his everlasting love. There is no friend on earth that can redeem me. The only friend is Jesus Christ, my King. He is my he is my friend. Beloved, in the story of the prodigal son, the character of the forgiving father who remains constant throughout the story is a picture of God. In the story, Jesus identifies himself with the father in his loving attitude towards the lost, symbolized by the younger son. God demonstrates his love for each individual and his personal attentiveness toward all humanity. We see in the story the graciousness of the father that brings the prodigal son to repentance. I humbly welcome you to enjoy your spiritual nourishment on the theme forgiveness, the key to family reunion carved from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, from verse 11 to 24, and I read. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So, he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and they squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So, he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his hands around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, bring the fattened calf, and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was lost and dead. Now 
is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The younger son asked his father for his share of inheritance, which would have been half of what his brother would receive. He requested for one third of the estate. Though his request was perfectly within his rights to ask, but it was not a loving thing to do, as it implied that he wished his father dead. The father did not rebuke him, but patiently granted his request. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may love. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Like the prodigal son, all of us possess the wrong ambition to be independent. Of course, that is the root of our persistence in sin. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, had this ambition. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. St. Paul writes, Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to have been done. Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Our sinful states are it. We are a departure and distance from God. We are in a place of constant disconnect from the Lord. That is why Jesus urges us to watch out, be on our guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 15. As Christians, we need not learn the hard way that covetousness leads to a life of dissatisfaction and disappointment as the prodigal son. We should also understand that the most valuable thing in life are those things we cannot buy or replace. What is the condition of your heart? Is your heart full of willful disobedience to all the goodness of the Lord offered in your selfishness and shallow living you are losing everything your disaster is monumental we can only find mercy in Christ our Lord and Savior but I'm not among the people we choose as our own every lost person a rebellious Christian has returned to a life of sin, which is never pretty, as St. James writes. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives back to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. We need to realize that apart from Christ, there is no hope for any sinner. The prodigal son discovered that repentance follows with a longing to return to fellowship with God. This is exactly the reunion to the family of God. When our repentance is genuine, 
we will admit our sin and give up our supposed rights as sons and daughters and take the position of slaves. Then we will return and fall at the feet of our Father and plead for mercy. Our Father in heaven is waiting for his children to return. He is full of compassion for you. He will embrace and kiss you. In the days of Jesus, it was not customary for a grown man to run. Yet, the father of the prodigal son runs to greet his son by his love and desire for restoration. He breaks convention. When a prodigal son began to make his confession, the father interrupted by issuing commands to honor his son. Bring the best robe, best ring, best feast. Forgiveness is the key that receives back a distant person to the family and in fellowship with God. Forgiveness is God's love, condescension, and grace. God's heart is full of compassion for his children. Jesus stands ready to welcome the returning sinner back home with joyous celebration. The prodigal son was satisfied to return home as a slave. But surprisingly and delightfully, he was restored back into his family as son. He went weary and filthy only to be transformed into the guest of honor in his rich father's home. This is exactly what God's grace in Christ Jesus does for you who are penitent sinners. The psalmist writes, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mud. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Psalm number 40, verse 2. We are not only forgiven our sins in Christ, but we also receive the spirit of adoption to sonship. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 13, we are God's children, heirs of God, and co heirs with Christ Jesus. In forgiveness, the best is announced and brought to you as a sign of proof of acceptance back into the family. The ring or signet is the sign of authority as sons of God in Christ. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Slaves were not putting on sandals, but a sandal was ordered for the prodigal son, a celebration of such magnitude with a fattened cow was rare. All representing what we receive in Christ Jesus upon repentance and salvation. The rope of Jesus' righteousness is bestowed upon you as children of God. Jesus does not treat you as your sin deserves or repay you according to your iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed your transgressions from you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are all prodigals having run from you and selfishly squandered your immeasurable resources of life, peace, and joy, and wallowed in sin. But you are ready to forgive and have us back to your family. Grant us a willing heart, heart of repentance, so that you might save us who are contrite. Amen.
There is no friend so faithful like my Jesus. He gave my soul and gave me peace with him. He gave to me the joy of my salvation. That's why I sing my glory for this day. He is my friend, my friend the only faithful friend of all. Thank you.